Good morning, Stacey. How are you doing? Good morning. Nice to meet you. Thanks for having us. Well, you know what? The, you guys, you, you've done something with this uh, podcast that is just so unique in the way that it's very storybook and it's very binge worthy. And, and, and I like it because it, once one episode ends, you want to go to the next one immediately because of the writing, because of everything that's going on inside the experience. Absolutely. It, they've done an amazing job putting it all together. And it, it blows my mind how they can take interviews and pieces of our story and weave it into something, you know, so incredible. It really is incredible. Well, when you when you say that it's a piece of your story, how did you even deal with that again? It's like living life all over again. You know, it's when you live it for the three years that we've lived it, mm-hmm. it just becomes, I think, a part of your daily life and who you are. And for us talking about it and and getting it out there because for so long we were silent that it's become a whole nother level of our healing that I don't think we would have ever had if we had not done something like this. Well, don't you think that uh, people that are listening are, are have gone through it or are, are seeing things from this going, oh my God, this could be me. And, and you're actually educating your listener as well? That was one of our main reasons when my son and I sat down and decided to do this together because he is a huge part of this as well, that we wanted to reach those people because we were those people, you know, he had the same experience of not having anyone that understood him or understood how he felt. So in hopes that we could put our story out there, you know, the messiness of it and everything. And we knew, you know, that it was putting a lot, making it public, but we also knew that there was going to be so much good. And we've already seen, you know, people that have come forward and said, you know, that, that their you know, fiance came forward after hearing my son's story. Mm. So we already know that it's touching lives. Mm, mm. You know, just, just, you know, Justin in court right there, you just automatically go into prayer. It doesn't matter if you're in your office or if you're driving the car, when you, when you start experiencing that on the, on the, the podcast, it's just, it's like, it's, it's a moment for everybody. Oh yeah. When it, it, you're talking about his, um, his speech. Oh yeah. Oh, it was, it was filthy. And it, you know, it, I didn't really listen to it or hear the entire um, thing because I think all of us that were in the courtroom that day almost blanked out a little bit because when it started to turn to just creepy and disgusting, Mm -hmm. we already knew he was creepy and disgusting, but when it took that turn and everyone could see it, I think we just shut down. So the first time I really got to dig into what he said was when I got the transcripts and it blew my mind you know, the level of, of his sociopathness, you know, it's just, it's, it's disgusting. Speaking of transcripts, I got to give you kudos here that when, when you go to the podcast, you actually provide transcripts for us. And, and because, you know, you've got your readers and you've also got your listeners as well as viewers and, and your connection to those that are tapping in, because if we miss something on the podcast, we can go right back into those transcripts and pick back up again. Yeah, I thought that was a really great idea because, you know, recording and everyone's voices can be different. I know that I talk very fast and sometimes can be hard to stay with sometimes. And, you know, different situations of recording, you can be muffled. And so I really appreciate the transcript so that everyone could go back and and dive into you know parts that they missed and things like that so yeah it was a really cool thing for me to see that too the inner war that you guys have gone through i i can't imagine where you locate peace and just the other day i was talking with a musician he says it's not about finding peace it's about finding harmony do you agree with that absolutely i think you have to find a place where you you come to some kind of peace with what happened Um, It doesn't mean that you accept it. It doesn't mean that what happened goes away. You have to find a way that you can sit in that and live with it, but also a way that you can take that and push that into, you know, doing something for good and reaching people. Because if we just leave it at the evil that he did, then he wins. Mm. And, And it's never a game about winning. No one won in this situation. But you have to take it to to some kind of level, because if you leave it at that evil, you know, that's just where it stays forever. You know, we've you've got some been there, done that moments. And one of them is that uh, with your two children, your daughter was not happy with the dating. She just uh, she and I love the way that you place that in there, (laughs) because I think all families go through something like that. Oh, yeah. When, you know, when I was a single mom for the eight years between my two marriages and, and had dates here and there, 
it, it's just they sh- they never wanted me to move on. It was almost like they just kind of wanted to stay this little three musketeer unit that we had going on. And she was a, a, a can I cuss on here? She was a yeah. shitty teenager. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> she was a shitty teenager. And, you know, it was all about her. And she didn't want to watch him while I went on dates. And, you know, why do you got to be with that person? And, you know, when I finally met him, they just embraced him he it was the first person that they ever really had a connection with wow. and i didn't date a ton um it wasn't you know every other week you know somebody knew but it was finally a person that they connected with and i felt they were safe around and they loved him and instantly formed a connection with him i would love to know how many women are going to reach out to you to go the signs were there that there was a breakup coming it was always 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 there but but you were so in love and and i, I totally understand that because my first marriage was the same way i was not going to break up but yet it was a messy son of a gun is what it was i mean be, but did you see the signals um, are you speaking of my first marriage with my yeah. older kids? Oh, father? yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, no, because I think that I was so focused on, you know, being a mom, raising my family, yeah. you know, and having, you know, everything that I wanted that that family unit with him. And, you know, my first husband and I, we never really fought. Um, you know, I knew that we did not have that crazy you know wild marriage that some people had and you know but i thought what we had was good and i never saw divorce even being an option in that i was completely blown away you know i look back on it now years later from a lens of yeah you know we weren't compatible i mean tyler says to me all the time i don't even know how you two could have been married. right you know you guys were so (laughs) different i don't even see it because he was two so he has no clue what our marriage was now michaela has a different view but you know, it's really hard to to say there were signs because, you know, everybody has rough patches in their marriage and that doesn't mean you just run to divorce court. Right. So, you know, I didn't see it that way. I just saw that we had pretty much a normal marriage like everybody else did. It ebbed and flowed. Did you pull from your journals or anything like that for this to come together? Because, I mean, it's 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 laid out so perfectly. This is not just somebody, you know, ad libbing or or doing some improv here. I mean, this is perfectly laid out. That I have to give credit all to the Betrayal podcast team. You know, when I tell people how this was put together, you know, it, it was sitting down having conversations mm. with K- Carrie and Andrea of just tell me your story. Tell me about this. Tell me what happened. And then they build a story around what we say and put everything all together. So it is it is just conversations that we've had that they've been able to pick things out of what we say. You know, there may be times that they have to come to us and say, oh, we need a little bit more on this. Mm -hmm. But generally, it's from conversation. Yeah, because I like the way that the sound bites really tell the story. It's not like a news event or anything like that. I mean, they really drop in those sound bites at the perfect time. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And and it's it's beautifully, beautifully written. You know, I, I there's no way I could ever put it together like that. And I remember, you know, when the first episode come out, I said to my sister or someone like, they really made me and Justin's relationship and our dating sound like a whirlwind romance. I'm like, I need you to know that it was not like that. (laughs) They made it sound way more magical than what it was. I mean, I'm sure at the time I thought it was magical, but I remember thinking, Oh, that sounds fairy tale-ish. I don't remember that. (laughs) Tyler stepping forward. That's a game changer in the story. Absolutely. Um, You know, I think, he for so long was going to stay silent. That was his plan just to always stay silent. And once he turned 18, you know, move out and just stay busy and not have to come around too much. And I think when it was finally, you know, he talks about in, in one of the episodes that's coming up about, um, we, we met with, um, a Hollywood actor, Anthony Edwards, who played goose and top gun. And they Mm. talk about their abuse and how long they stay silent. And his, his thought was he stays silent. You know, this is only happening to me. It's nobody else but me. And he realizes after a conversation with my sister that his little brother could possibly be next up oh if, you know, when once Tyler would have left the home. And that ultimately is what brought him forward, I think, is, is thinking about that, oh, gosh, this, this can happen to my brother. 
Wow. Now, in the, in the yeah. way of love being love, we know that it's blind. We also know that it's forgiving, but it affects the heart. When it affects the heart, it affects other people. What about everybody around you? I think that's been really hard for me is because, you know, I love the people that I love, you know, and my friends are my family and, you know, everyone around us was affected by this. Mm -hmm. You don't realize, you know, friends of mine who came into our home who now check bathrooms when they go to the bathroom for cameras, Um, you know, patients. Um, I had a patient of his reach out to me and say, you know, I thought your husband walked on water until he didn't. He was, you know, he saved my life. And then this happens, you know, and so now she has not been to the doctor since this happened. Mm. It breaks my heart for the, just how far it reached. And I, you don't realize how far it reaches, you know, just every corner of our lives and every person that interacted with us, I'm sure it's changed the way, you know, parents allow their children. I know a girl from my work said, you know, I, I will no longer allow my children to stay the night at people's houses after yep. I've heard your story. Yep. Yep. It's so true. It's it so is, true. It has completely changed people's lives. Everywhere you go, you're being watched. And it doesn't mean that you're being watched, you know, because of theft or anything like that. There's always somebody that's going to try to steal something from you. Oh, you know, a week, a week after all the court stuff was done, I took my children, all of us on a cruise uh, this past February, just to kind of start over and make some good memories and just have some fun and not focus on what was going on. A week after we came home, it was found that the cruise ship we were on, one of the room stewards had placed video cameras in the rooms. Mm -hmm. And we were just sick. I remember my daughter texting me like, it wasn't our floor, mom, thank God. You know, but you just, you don't realize everywhere you go, this evil is there. You just have to be aware. Um, And I think we've spent a lot of time kind of being blind to some of the things because it's not, it's an ugly thing to talk about. And I think we need to know that these things go on and be more vigilant yeah. about looking for things. Well, that's why I think that this podcast is, is going to be a conversation starter in the way that we're going to experience what you went through, which was a living nightmare. But then at the same time, we're going we're going to try to become more aware in our own steps growing forward. And and that was something that Carrie and I and Andrea, the host, we talked a lot about it. You know, there were things that I am ashamed of. Yeah. There are things that if I could go back, I would do it differently. Um, But that comes from a lens of seeing it three years later, not being in the middle of all of it. And so I think for me, when I share, you know, the things of I may have missed this or yes, I shouldn't have done this. You know, I want someone that's in the middle of that to say, oh, you know what? Maybe I shouldn't do that. Mm. Maybe, you know, I was thinking about this. You know, so I know that there are things that I'm probably being crucified for online. And, and I understand that. I, I crucify my own self for that. Um, but that was very important for me to be honest, even in the things that I knew that would not look so well to other people. See, that's one of the reasons why I want to ask about going back into your past like that, because I practice living in the presence of now. And so when, when I hear that you're going back three years, all I'm doing, I'm just praying for you. I'm going, oh, my God, I can't believe you're going back into an area so dark. You have, if you want to make changes, you know, my, my thoughts in a lot of this is I still have two small children right? and who have now lost a father and, you know, thank God that, that, that happened early enough that they did not have to deal with most of what my older children have had to deal with. Um, but if I want to change the patterns that I've noticed in, in things in this situation and in my life and, and reflecting on who I am and what I've done and how I handle things, if I want to change things for them, I have to recognize those things. I have to go back to areas that I may not want to go back to mm. that I'm ashamed of. Mm. Because if I don't fix that, I I will continue to either repeat a pattern yep. of, you know, seeing people, you know, better than what they truly are. Mm. You know, I've always seen the good in people, but I also need to have some more boundaries. So I've learned that it's okay for me to set some boundaries because that is going to affect my two small children moving forward mm. and even my older children. That reminds me of it, through Native American spirituality, we are taught that, you know, what we do today will affect the next seven generations. I mean, this is one of those moments that, and I love the fact that you're trying to say, hey, look, we're going to reroute some things so it doesn't get to that seventh generation. Exactly. It, you know, if, if we can stop 
this from carrying on to our children and our children's children you know that is that is absolutely what we want to do is this is not something we want to carry into our future and our future generations and this is not something that i want my future grandchildren and great children to have to carry for us i want to carry it i want to deal with it you know we want to work on it together because i don't want that for for anyone that comes behind me now in from from one parent to another parent here my my deepest question is is that when children go through something like this it usually and it can lead to addiction because they're looking for that escape there's got to be conversations going on between you and your two kids absolutely you know and that is i think um for us we we talk about everything Good. and we talk about this and we have very open dialogue about what has happened in our lives and I think that that is huge for people to be able to have these conversations, Um, you know, and Tyler and I have talked about, you know, addiction and how this can turn into things. And when we have unprocessed trauma and you don't deal with it, Mm -hmm. you know, it can manifest into so many different things. And so him and I have very open conversations about that. And I think that that is truly what kind of keeps him you know, on, on the straight and hopefully away from those things, you know, and and I hope it continues to be like that for the rest of his life. And he never has to deal with something like that. You know, it's it's one of those things where it's like when, when your children start having children, I bet you, you are going to be a very protective grandmother. Oh, absolutely. I say they're going to be my best friends too. I tell my older daughter, I'm like, they don't even know it yet, but they're going to be my best friend. (laughs) Um, But, you know, yes, I think it'll change the way that my children parent as well. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and I hope that it doesn't come from a helicopter mom and dad kind of thing that I still think we need to give our children that freedom to turn into who that they're, they're meant to turn into. But I think we, and and not scare the shit out of them, you know, that everybody's going to touch them someday, but we need to, to put that into our children. So I hope that it makes them better parents. I already know they're going to be amazing parents, but I hope it makes them even better. Are you creating a website that is going to help other mothers that, that are basically in secrecy right now? You know, I don't know what our plan is. I really don't. Um, You know, this has been far more than we ever imagined the reach, the people. I mean, we've even heard from men that have come forward to say that they have been abused since hearing Tyler's story. So we know that the reach is there. We know that this is something that needs to be talked about. Um, But I I don't know where we're going to go next with it. I think that's something we kind of need to sit on and take all this in right now because it's been it's been over a little overwhelming in good ways and bad ways, you know, doing this. So I think we need to process it before we figure out our next step. You got to come back to the show anytime in the future. The door is always going to be open for Uh, you. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having us, but yeah, definitely listen and and take it to heart and, you know, take it to, to your children and your friends, children, and, and let's, you know, start making this more something that, that people are okay to talk about. Absolutely. Be brilliant today. Okay. Yeah. All right, you too. Thank you. Have a great day.